To many, Sister Clara Muhammad is the Mary McLeod Bethune of the Muslim community. Like Ms. Bethune, Clara Muhammad understood the absolute necessity of African Americans establishing, managing, and supporting their own schools. Being Muslim and African American, Sister Muhammad had no doubts about this basic and essential responsibility, the responsibility to educate our children in the best manner. To see or to visualize a school in the mind's eye is one thing, but to make that vision a reality is quite another. Sister Muhammad desired for all children the best kind of education, an Islamic education. She treated every student and, in fact, every person with love, respect, and kindness. Clara Muhammad, a devoted and supportive wife to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, was the loving mother of eight children. Muhammad University of Islam was renamed Sister Clara Muhammad Elementary and Secondary School in 1975 by her son, Imam Warathuddin Muhammad. Sister Clara Muhammad School is one of the few religious schools established and operated independently by African Americans still in existence today. Sister Clara Muhammad's strength and commitment was to never allow fear of failure, criticism, police intimidation, or lack of funds deter her from the cause of educating children in the manner approved by the one Lord of humanity, Allah. Our dear sister, Clara Muhammad, passed from this life August 12, 1972. History may yet record that through her example, she left the keys for the establishment of a successful educational institution, which inshallah, God willing, will become the standard for all others. May the peace that only Allah gives be with you. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Imam Fahim Shuaib, the resident Imam of Masjid al Athene and the director of the Sister Clara Muhammad School in Oakland. We are grateful to Allah that we have this opportunity to share with you some of the highlights from the Sister Clara Muhammad School in Oakland. The educational philosophy of the Sister Clara Muhammad School is a combination of nature, human potential, and nurture, environmental influence. Our philosophy is to place the student in an environment which is conducive to the student's development. Every student is born with the potential to learn and to succeed. It is the responsibility of the academic institution to provide the proper habitat needed to surface that student's potential. The word education is from the Latin educere, to draw out. Thus, education is the process of drawing out the student's potential for success and for learning. The educational methodology of the Sister Clara Muhammad School is teacher-based and writing-based. Though we do use the California State-approved textbook series for elementary schools, teacher-based education is an instructional method which is not limited to the textbook. The teacher is a liaison for the student and the textbook to ensure that the student is structured according to the knowledge of the subject. Writing-based means that the student is constantly writing class notes and even rewriting certain rules, axioms, and lessons which appear in the text. This method enhances the student's information and communication skills while increasing retention. The mission of Sister Clara Muhammad School in Oakland is simple and straightforward. Its mission is to produce a student who is a literate, morally conscious person capable of functioning responsibly in a modern society. The impact that students from Sister Clara Muhammad School will have on future society is already evident when they visit public institutions for field trips and academic excursions. Recently, Shirley Shabazz of the Evening of Elegance Committee interviewed the two assistant directors of Sister Clara Muhammad School in Oakland and discovered some examples of the student and professional impact of Sister Clara Muhammad School on the public. What kinds of interactions do you see between community organizations and other educational institutions and their involvement with Sister Clara Muhammad School students in other words, how do the students interact with groups outside of the school setting? And what is their response to the students and their behavior and their conduct? Well, we have a, a very special relationship going on with the um, Oakland Museum. 
We have taken advantage of all of their programs for schools this year, and um, the response of, from them to us has been phenomenal. Um, it seems that our students um, have a level of um, uh, inquisitiveness that they have not seen in a long time. They are questioning students. They are uh, very anxious to know. You know, when you go on the tours at the Oakland Museum, the docent takes you through uh, the variety of museums and um, gives the information about the, the different um, items and displays that are there. But there has not been one that, they could go, that they've gone through where they haven't had the docent right on their toes with questions and um, wanting to know more. We have even had the docents to write us on three occasions to either answer questions that they couldn't answer while we were there or either to just comment on what a wonderful time they had with the class. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a great joy for any teacher to teach children who are responsive and they find a, a high level of responsiveness in our students, which is just wonderful. Another comment that is always made is about their conduct. They're very impressed with the, the politeness and the level of courtesy and the ability to really listen and um, take in the information as it's given. So we're very proud of them for those reasons. Not only do the students make an impact, Sister Clara Muhammad School is acquiring a considerable institutional reputation. Praise be to God that we don't have <laughs> low test scores, but we have the computer lab since we're within the system. We get to take part in this because we're taxpayers. So the, um, the students have d uh, developed a bond uh, with the teacher, who is a public school teacher who comes and helps us here. The teachers want to stay all week. I mean, they they're only supposed to be assigned here a couple of days, but they come on their own. And then their uh, administrators come to visit because then here they see a consistent method of education. They see the flow of education going on. Like I say, they don't see all the politics that are going on. They see teachers that are able to create and teach without having a lot of peripheral uh, things pulling at them from doing their job. So the, uh, usually the um, teachers here offer like a, a spark of hope to the edu ed educators. And here's where it's working. You know, here's a place where I can really you know, feel free to talk. You know, I don't have to worry about you know, limiting my uh, conversation or getting into a lot of things that don't really work for me. The magnitude of the future impact of the students from Sister Clara Muhammad School is also demonstrated by the manner in which they interact in learning and competing with students from other educational institutions. Sister Clara Muhammad School students have distinguished themselves in publicly administered advanced educational programs such as the MESA, Math Engineering Science Achievement Program, conducted at the prestigious University of California at Berkeley campus. Victor Carey, program director, explains the origins and purpose of the MESA program. MESA was a program that started um, in 1970 um, here at UC Berkeley, and it's, uh, we're celebrating our 20th anniversary. Um, it's a program that really was a very small uh, pilot, starting with one high school in Oakland, Oakland Technical High School, with 25 students, and um, from that time has grown into a program that now has approximately 4,000 students at the pre-college level participating and another 3,000 students at the undergraduate level participating. Sister Clara Muhammad School enrollees and alumni continue to display the caliber of education they received at Sister Clara Muhammad School in the Mesa Day Regional Competition. One of the things that was started again, initiated here at Berkeley 10 years ago, was what we call Mesa Day. Uh, Mesa Day is a competition where students from uh, Mesa centers all over Northern California. That's about, there are eight centers in Northern California. They come together where you have close to a thousand students of color participating in math competitions, um, uh, engineering competitions where they built bridges and oil derricks and, and so on, um, in um, essay, speech, and spelling competitions um, with, with the idea of promoting um, the fact that these are all excellent students who are interested in, in their education and we have a friendly competition mm -hmm. and of course Berkeley always wins <laughs> um, and uh, we uh, have a real good time on that day and it also gives a, an opportunity on that day to not only acknowledge the kids but the organization to let industry see what's going on in fact industry is a heavy uh, contributor to Mesa Day and, and really supports that that activity 
Tahita Rashid received back-to-back -back gold medals in math, 1989, algebra in 1990 in the Mesa Day program. Muhammad Abdul Rahman won the silver medal for spelling in 1989 and the gold medal for spelling in 1990. Fatima Lacey achieved gold medal for pre-algebra and bronze medal for spelling in 1989. She also earned the silver medal for math in 1990. Tawhida and Muhammad also crowned their successes by receiving the prestigious Young Scholars Award, which included $200 in bonds. The performance of Sister Clara Muhammad School on National Norm Reference Tests has also been remarkable. While one public school administrator laments their inability to move the test scores up and stabilize them, Sister Clara Muhammad School has shown consistent progress. Even though on average exiting sixth grade scores for Sister Clara Muhammad graduates are one and a half grades above expected performance, of particular note is the class average in reference skills for the sixth grade class of 1990. This is particularly significant considering the fact that the most valuable asset in modern society and for our students is the ability to use knowledge to acquire knowledge. Assistant Director Daia Taha. What it means at its basis that they know how to locate information so that when they don't know, they know what source to go to to find it. Um, we find that in our particular situation, our children are, are doing a lot of research there. We have a lot of projects that they're involved in, in terms of being able to utilize the library, to utilize the encyclopedia that are here on site, to, to go to different sources of information and glean out what it is that they're, um, you know, the information that they need to, to complete their projects. And as we know, in an information age, this is a very valuable skill, so we're very pleased. In addition to the splendid academic performance of the Sister Clara Muhammad School and its students, there are certain key ingredients to education at Sister Clara Muhammad School which cannot be measured by norm reference tests or criterion reference tests. They are the moral, the spiritual, and the ethical ingredients. Those ingredients have proven to be invaluable assets to Sister Clara Muhammad School alumni, such as Sister Tawhida Rashid and Brother Muhammad Abdul Rahman. Well, Sister Clara Muhammad School, it seemed better than the public schools. To me, uh, Sister Clara Muhammad School, it taught me about my religion, which is a real blessing. I like to learn about Muslims and Al-Islam and everything. And it helped me to understand that in junior high, I'm going to have, you know, get a lot of homework, have hard subjects. And it helped me by doing the same thing, giving me a lot of homework, helping me in my subjects a lot, especially math and language, because those are two main topics in uh, junior high today. Mm -hmm. And so it's really different from public schools because the public school that I go to, the junior high I go to, uh, they don't teach you about your religion. I mean, it's predominantly black, but they teach about Romans and Russians and the continents and all that, and they don't teach about your ethnics and all that. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Claremont, it has lower expectations mm. than Sister Claremont Muhammad School. They really teach you a lot, but Sister Claremont Muhammad School, you learn about your religion. Mm -hmm. And it's, like I said before, it's a more family type environment mm -hmm. where you know people, you have people you can t always talk to. Mm -hmm. and, cl and in Claremont, it's, it's good in a way because you have that more independent feeling. Mm -hmm. you learn what it's like to to take care of your responsibilities. And so far as going in junior high, you have a great responsibility so far as you have to know. You have to learn seven different classes, mm -hmm. seven different teachers, opposed to one class mm -hmm. and one teacher. Mm -hmm. And so you, you feel like you've adjusted well? Uh, yeah, to it's, it's, you know, I feel like even though there was only one class and one teacher in Sister Muhammad School, they mm -hmm. still taught us mm -hmm. that you're going to have to know these different things, mm -hmm. take, take on these different responsibilities once mm -hmm. you get into mm -hmm. junior high school. The fundamentals of Al-Islam undergird the academic foundation of the curriculum at Sister Clara Muhammad School. There are two main sources for an understanding of Al-Islam. 
the Holy Quran and collections of recorded words and actions of the Prophet Muhammad, they make up the Sunnah and are normally referred to as Hadith. As the Holy Quran is the word of Allah, it must be strictly followed. In the same way, these teachings contained by the Prophet Sunnah must be observed by all who profess to be Muslim. For about them, the Quran says, and whatsoever the messenger giveth you, take it, and whatsoever he forbiddeth, abstain from it. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi said, I do not eat reclined. Toothbrush and purify the mouth. It is a means of seeking Allah's pleasure. The strong man is not the good wrestler. The strong man is only he who can control his anger. Believers are to one another like when they building and parts support each other. Say what is good or keep silent. Upon entering your house, greet your family. It will be a blessing upon you and your family. There should neither be harm nor the reciprocated of harm. Part of someone being a good Muslim is leaving a loan that which does not concern him. Whosoever sees an evil action, let him change it with his hand. And if he is still unable to do so, let him change it with his tongue. And if he is still unable to do so, let him change it with his heart. Eat together, not separately, for the blessing is associated with the company. Without doubt, it is the centrality of that way of life called al-Islam in the hearts and minds of both student and teacher which ensures and enhances the academic progress of Sister Clara Muhammad School. Khadija Muhammad, the new instructor of Sister Clara Muhammad School's early learning department, has found this to be especially true for her young students. It is the Hadith and the Quran. I use um, the Hadith for correcting the children when they are not doing what they should be doing. Um, we use examples such as um, the prophet said, say what is good or keep silent. Um, things like um, Allah created you in excellence and gave you knowledge of all things. And it just seemed to work from within to bring out that good behavior. Every day, the midday prayer at Sister Clara Muhammad School brings the students to heightened awareness of the important role that reverence for God plays in education. None of the great progress of Sister Clara Muhammad School, academically or spiritually, would be possible without the positive contributions of a well-qualified, dedicated, and self-sacrificing staff who deliver education to the children and sound advice to the parents. A fine example is Wafia Lukman, first grade teacher at Sister Clara Muhammad School. I, have, um, I hold a BA from San Francisco, San Francisco State University and an elementary education credential from the same institution. They should ensure that children um, uh, like to learn, okay? They should, they should try to provide an environment where it's fun, it's something that's exciting. Um, they should read to them all the time, anytime, whenever there's an opportunity. Um, allow them to cut, allow them to explore, allow them to uh, exchange oral, orally with the language. And uh, that, I think that's some of the best preparation for entering this classroom. Sixth grade teacher Carla Ali, who presently commutes 
from Fairfield, California, every day with her three children, is a sterling model of the kind of commitment and vision present in the teaching staff at Sister Clara Muhammad School. I graduated from the Uni University of Pittsburgh with an associate's in behavioral science and a bachelor's of science in clinical child psychology. But I've been in a learning environment since, um, since the summer of 1979, so I've been in a teaching mode for approximately 11 years. But most of my teaching experience has been here at Cisco School. I like to think of it as the womb of an expected mother. You know, it's, uh, we're very careful what we, ha what we put into our bodies as a mother and keep, always keeping in mind the end result, the beautiful baby that will eventually be born. So inshallah, following the, uh, the religion of Islam, we can produce morally conscious babies. The support staff at Sister Clara Muhammad School, 1990-1991, include teacher's aides, Tamu Hamid Westbrook, Sonnet Hamid, and Sister Cora Aline. It also includes teacher resource support person, Lorelai Iddeen. The two individuals who provide practically indispensable support to both the Sister Clara Muhammad School in Oakland as well as the Masjid Warathin in Oakland are James Abdul Shakur, who serves as the Chief Fiscal Officer for both Masjid Warathin and Sister Clara Muhammad School, and Latifa Shahid, who serves as the Executive Secretary for the Imam of Masjid Warathin as well as the Director of Sister Clara Muhammad School. The healthy, clean, and wholesome environment of Sister Clara Muhammad School owes a great debt of gratitude to the stable and consistent work ethic of Brother Emmett Aline. Committed and dedicated parents are of irreplaceable value to any educational institution. Sister Clara Muhammad School is home to a rare breed of parent. Sister Zakia Rashid, parent of current and former students, is a case in point. In Tawhida began kindergarten, we were living in the San Jose area. And there was not an Islamic elementary school in that area. And I thought to myself, what am I going to do as far as getting this child off to a good start? I looked around at some of the other private schools and some of the public schools, but I just didn't find what I wanted for my child. What we did was we packed up and we moved to Oakland. And I wasn't able to get a transfer on my job at that time. So what I did was I commuted an hour and a half each morning for a year and a half and each afternoon for a year and a half in order that my child, my children, could be educated at the Sister Clara Muhammad mm -hmm. School. By the grace of Allah, Sister Clara Muhammad School is blessed with added support from parent volunteers who support Sister Clara Muhammad School through its various fundraising efforts. What makes me continue to um, sacrifice with Sister Clara Muhammad School mm -hmm. is, first of all, Allah um, has given me so many blessings just from teaching in the school. I've taught five years at Sister Clara Muhammad School, and I have given out to the children, and Allah has in return given back to me. So it's, it's a tremendous blessing to be able to do this, and because the blessings come and they're so obvious from Allah, so you just want to continue to do it. So first of all, Allah is my motivator. And then I look at the children and see the beautiful faces and the progress that they make each year. You know, I've seen children from preschool all the way through sixth grade make tremendous progress. And uh, I look at my own family, my children that um, all reared in, they were, uh, they started in the preschool at Sister Clara Muhammad School, they graduated in the sixth grade, and they are making strides out in the public school. And so these are the things that keep me going, just the beautiful uh, progress that our, our children make. And then I look at the teachers. When you look at a teacher who makes very little money, she doesn't, she's not on the level of the public school teacher in terms of resources or uh, income, however her inner knowledge and her commitment is greater, I think, than the average individual. When you see the children show their love to this teacher, my daughter comes home, my, my teacher, I have to have this, it's her birthday, we have to do this. This is something that is personal and you, you don't see it all the time in the public school. These are the kind of motivations that I receive from uh, the, stu the, the uh, staff 
and it helps me to continue. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's teachers that uh, st they, they come early and they stay late. You have um, teachers that are so dedicated until that's ins inspiration within itself. So it's like you see yours as simply reflecting the dedication you already see. And that I already there. see, yes. Amethala? Um, I guess I just see it as part of um, what being a mother and of a student who, who goes to Clara Muhammad School. And um, even if I didn't have children, you know, just appreciating what the institution stands for, you know, and seeing the products that have come through the Islamic institutions and are now making a contribution to the society. And um, as Tawhida was saying, when you see the children as they, as they grow and they develop, you know, and you maybe don't see them for a year or two and you see them and now you're looking up to them mm -hmm. and you say, my goodness, this child, I remember when she was in the pre-K or mm -hmm. he was in, you know, the first grade and you see how they've grown and they've developed and, um, and you see how they are, are wholesome, mm -hmm. you know, how they're healthy mm -hmm. individuals. Mm -hmm. Um, you, ju you know, you just have to continue to do what has mm -hmm. to be done, That's you know. Right. The flagship fundraiser for Sister Clara Muhammad School is its annual Evening of Elegance. The annual Evening of Elegance is a gala traditional benefit for the Sister Clara Muhammad School in Oakland, which began in 1982. Each year, this major cultural event plays host to hundreds of guests, including dignitaries and leaders in all fields. The annual Evening of Elegance has contributed nearly $50,000 to the Sister Clara Muhammad School in Oakland over the past eight years. We thank Allah for having had the opportunity to share with you these highlights from the Sister Clara Muhammad School in Oakland. And with continuing support like yours, we will be able to show more and greater progress in the future. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the peace and the blessings of Allah forever be upon him, said, that when a man dies, everything ceases to be recorded for him except three things. The charity given from which benefit continues to be gained, the knowledge given from which benefit continues to be gained, and the prayers of a righteous child for their parents. Sister Clara Muhammad School is one of those rare vehicles that gives you the greatest opportunity to contribute for your own lasting benefit. Because the children will benefit from the charity that you give and so will you. The knowledge that they acquire at Sister Clara Muhammad School will benefit them as well as you. And they learn to pray at Sister Clara Muhammad School and they will pray for you. And so we pray Allah that you will continue and increase your support for the Sister Clara Muhammad School. And please recognize that when you do, you are investing for educational excellence in the 90s. May the peace that only Allah gives be with you. Assalamu alaikum. <coughs>